Welcome to the first part of the MongooseBot integration tutorial. In this series, we're going to cover how to configure Mongoose to facilitate consumption and publication of business object documents to and from ION and associated in for applications. In this video, we're going to demonstrate BOD consumption and creation using a Mongoose application to augment the functionality of existing in for business systems. We'll wrap up with configuring Mongoose for sending and receiving BODs. The goal is to extend the functionality of the base in for ERP application without making any changes to source code. By making the changes outside of the base ERP application, you have an easier path for migration or upgrade in the future because data still resides in the base system. Mongoose just accesses what it needs, and it's much easier to develop applications in than many existing ERP frameworks. Let's take a look at how this works. Here we're looking at an Infor ERP application called Infor LN, and it's desired that we create a supplier portal application. If we take a look at Purchase Order 374, this could be any purchase order system in any Infor business system that's capable of interacting with Infor's enterprise service bus product, ION. We want to develop the outside supplier portal to be made available to vendors so that they can give us their best estimate of the confirmed receipt date of the product that's on the purchase order. For this example, we're going to manually publish this purchase order as a BOD. Note that normally this would happen automatically on the print of a purchase order. We now see that we have one published record. We've generated a business object document, which is an XML to be consumed by ION. If we look at ION and filter for the past hour with the document type of purchase order, we see sync purchase order 374 that we generated. Click on that purchase order and we get a diagram showing that IN4LN has published a BOD. If we switch to our Mongoose application and open our consumer portal, we can see that the BOD has been consumed by Mongoose, where we will then enter the promised delivery date. When we save this record, an outgoing sync purchase order is generated. Switching back to Ion Desk, we see that we have the original sync purchase order, then an acknowledgement from Mongoose that it's picked up the BOD, and a few exchanges. Then Mongoose will send a BOD back to LN, updating the date, and then LN acknowledges that new information. Now the date is refreshed in LN, and it contains the confirmed receipt date. Let's review what just happened. We took a purchase order that existed in LN. Then LN generated a BOD, which is an XML, and transmitted it to ION. ION is Infor's enterprise service bus product for facilitating the exchange of BODs between application systems. ION then picked up the BOD and transmitted it to Mongoose. Mongoose received the BOD and decoded the XML. The data was presented in an interactive form for users to make changes. On save, an outgoing BOD was generated and it sent it back to ION, which then passed it to LN. LN consumes the BOD and updates the information. Now that we've seen how this works, let's set up a few things so we can begin building. Mongoose is bidirectionally ION enabled out of the box, meaning that it can send and receive BODs. Mongoose uses replication documents to convert IDO data into standardized XML documents called business object documents, and it maps IDO properties to BOD elements. It leverages native multi-site replication functionality that exchange XMLs back and forth to add, modify, and delete records. All we have to do is create a special ION site to make that happen. In order for Mongoose to communicate with ION, we have to configure this special site. For this video, we're going to be using Mongoose version 8.0. In the WinStudio Master Explorer, Expand Modules, System, and in the Replication folder, open the intranets form. Execute filter in place, and we see two sets of intranets. Our default intranet, which enables our default sites to communicate. But we also need to set up our special transport, which is the ESB transport, which is what ION will connect over. Infor bus is the recommended default intranet name. The name isn't important, but it should be descriptive. Check the external box and set the transport to ESB. This establishes the link to the ION bus, so that ION can find and deposit BODs. When you select this option, the system disables all options in the HTTP group. 
Once you're done, click Save. Next, open the Sites form and execute Filter in Place. Notice we have our default site, which is where the data is located. This is the site we want to interact with, but we need to create a site that we can attach ION to. Create a bus site. Again, it doesn't matter what we call it. Notice that these two sites have different intranet names. If we click on the site user map for the bus site, the from site is the default site. If we look at the default site site user map tab, we see that its from site is in for bus. This allows us to exchange information. Back on the system info tab, we need to have a logical ID which is associated inside of ION with a connection point that the default site will use to communicate with other systems via ION. Note that connection points inside of ION all start with a prefix INFOR for the INFOR tenant. The mongoose connection point is labeled MG. And finally, this individual site is known by INNO underscore MG app. Again, this is just a descriptive name, and these three pieces in this dotted notation distinguish the application and the site independently as a connection point inside of ION. Now you can close the sites form. Open up the replication categories form, and first we need to create a replication category that will hold the replication rule. We've named our category ESB, and we've given it a description of Enterprise Service Bus. Don't worry about the bottom grid for now. We'll take a look at that a little bit later. Save the form. Now we can create a replication rule, so open up the replication rules form and execute filter in place. In order to do exchanges with our bus, we have to set up an infor rule for replication. Because we are using the existing replication functionality, we have to tell it to talk with these replication rules. The source site is default, and the target site is in for bus. Select a category of ESB and set the interval type to immediate so that the bot is generated as soon as we do any add, update, or deletes of information on an IDO. That's it for the rule, so go ahead and save. With our category and rule set up, we can now look at replication management. All we have to do here is click Regenerate Replication Triggers to refresh all the replication triggers based on the replication rule we just created. Okay, so that's everything we have to set up inside of Mongoose in order to set up the replication. The next two pieces we have to look at are outside of Mongoose, and they are the Configuration Manager and Service Configuration Manager. Let's look at the Configuration Manager first. In order for the ION bus to communicate with the Mongoose services, we must tell it which configuration to talk to. And it's required that the configuration name is exactly the name of the site that we want to transact with, which is default. In our case, the connection Mongoose ION is the one we've been using to get in and out of the Mongoose application with. So what we can do is select that configuration and copy it, and then just change the name of the copy to default. That's it, so we can close our configuration manager. Next, open up the Service Configuration Manager. We need to tell the Windows services which we're going to run which configuration to replicate to. On the Replication tab at the top, the replication documents are the things that are going to transact the BODs using this configuration. Select our default configuration from the Replicator Configuration dropdown. In the Inbound Bus Configuration dropdown, select the default configuration. This is the thing that's going to connect with ION. Click Save and Exit. Next, open up the Windows services on the Utility server. We see a few Infor services. We have an inbound bus service, which is actually doing the transactional processing of the documents as they come in. The Replication Queue listener stores BODs in the outbox tables, and it also listens for incoming messages, but only for standard non-transactional replication. The last service we want to look at is the replicator, which sends information to and from the inbound and outbound queue. This particular version of the inbound bus service runs in the background, but there is a foreground version that we're going to look at when we're looking to consume that information. Well, that's it for configuring Mongoose for connection with ION. Now let's take a look at the connection point in ION. Note that this is a brief overview of ION, and there is detailed information on what we're about to go over in the ION documentation. Here we see our INNO MG app, 
And if we select that, we see the name of our app and that we're on the N4 tenant. We are looking at a logical ID type of MG, which is Mongoose. And if we look at the logical ID, that all gets constructed into n4.mg.innl underscore mg app. So that's how we build the connection point for that site. Down here we can see that we're connecting to a SQL server. This tells Ion where the server is and how to connect to it with SA and a password. If you click test, you can see that it's communicating. With the test established, we can click on the Documents tab and assign documents that we're going to connect with and execute process and sync verbs against. We'll be looking at that later. Once we've established connection points, then we have to establish document flows. This sets up the connection point between LN and Mongoose and any of the documents that it's going to exchange. Here's a document flow for our purchase order. Here's our LN application, and here's our Mongoose application. And in between that, we have a document of purchase order, and the verb is sync. This is when we are sending a purchase order from LN to Mongoose. Then in our Mongoose app, we make a change to that purchase order, and we send back a purchase order process bod that is then transmitted to LN. All of these steps are in the ION documentation. We just wanted to show you briefly what's happening. Well, we're going to draw the line there for video one. In the next video, we're going to be setting up a purchase order incoming bod as a replication document to feed a custom Mongoose purchase order application. We'll see you there.